Hello everyone, Dana Sahir with Action VFX. In this tutorial, we will learn how to do this Energy Blast effects in Adobe After Effects. We will be using Action VFX assets collection such as blasters, energy bursts, energy shockwave, and icon lens flare. We will learn how to combine our energy assets to create these effects, how to use expression to convert 3D tracking data into 2D, and then add in glow effects using Red Giant Optical Glow plugin. This tutorial will just cover how to create one blast, which then you can duplicate multiple times throughout the shop. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here is our plate. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to set the timing for our effects. So let's find the time where she starts shooting around here. And then we're going to go to the right and click on this triangle and drag to when she starts shooting. So now we know when to add our elements. So next, let's start building our effects. So first, what we want to do is we want to add an energy blast coming out of the gun. And then I want to add like a sci-fi muzzle flash using lens flare and also energy bursts and energy shockwave. So let's first start add our energy blasts. So I'm going to use the blaster toward number two. Okay, so let's solo it for now. So what we have here is an energy blast coming from the distance towards the camera, which is exactly what we want. And in each clip, we actually have multiple blasters animation, but we just need one. So we are going to trim the clip later. Okay, so let's disable the solo on our blaster. And then we're going to go back to our time here when she's about to start shooting. And then we're going to get our blaster and drag the time maybe uh, until around here. And then we want to put it on our gun barrel, press R, rotate it, and there we go. So now we have our energy blast coming out of the gun. And of course, we want to trim our asset. So I'll open bracket around here because that's when it starts. And then after it's out of the frame, we're going to alt close bracket. So if we hit play, one thing that we noticed is, of course, the energy is going a bit slow. So let's retime that. Let's right click on our blaster, go to time, and then time stretch. And we're going to go with 50%. So now it's moving twice faster. And then here we want to, of course, cut the tail part of the blaster here. So let's go to pen tool and start masking. And then we're going to press M and we're going to change it to subtract and then press F and then we're going to smooth out the edges. So now let's get rid of these dark edges and also makes the energy blend better with the shot. So let's go to our blaster and change the blending mode to screen. There we go. So next what we're going to do is we want to start, of course, continue building the assets. Now I want to add the muzzle flash. So let's bring our icon lens flare. There we go. And then here we don't see anything, just white dots. So what we want is to drag the layer timeline and find the time where the lens flare appear. There we go. This is what I like. And then I want to right click time and then freeze frame. So now it stays on that frame. So now let's remove the black background. So let's go to the blending mode and actually I want to choose add instead of screen because as I've mentioned in my other tutorial about blending modes is that in additive, not only that you remove the black background, you also mix the elements a bit brighter. Whereas if you choose screen, you remove the black background, but the brightness still the same as before. So I actually want to use add because this is supposed to be high energy muscle flash. So I want it to be super bright. So let's move it here. There we go. And then I want this to only appear for one frame. So let's go to the part where we want it to appear here on this frame and then hold alt and open bracket and then close bracket. So now we have our muzzle flash. Awesome. So next what we're going to do is we are going to add our energy burst that will work as some sort of uh, an after smoke, like an afterglow of the muzzle flash. So let's go to energy burst and we're going to get energy burst front. There we go. 
And then of course, we want to put it below all of our elements. And then what we want to do is we want to find a time in the energy burst where it looked most like smoke. So maybe around here. So let's trim again. So Alt open bracket. So now the energy blast only starts appearing on that flame. And then what we want to do is we want to scale it down and turn the blending mode to screen again. There we go. So this is what we have. So of course, here we see two problems. The first problem is the energy burst is going too slow, which we will fix. And the second is the energy burst is not tracked into the scene, which again, we will fix later in the tutorial. So first, let's fix the timing. We're going to go to the energy burst again, and we're going to right click time, time stretch. We're going to make it less slow, make it really fast. So let's go with say 25%. There we go. So let's hit play again. It looks a bit better now. The tracking issue is kind of fixed a little bit, but we're still going to fix it a bit better later, but it's already looking really good. So next, what we're going to do is we want to add other effects, which is energy shockwave. So let's get energy shockwave here. And then now I want to find a frame at the beginning when the shockwave kind of started forming and then Alt open bracket. So now this is where it starts. And then let's move it here and then put it below everything and then change it to screen. Boom. So let's play again. Looks okay, but so far the energy burst is a bit again too slow. So let's make it faster. Right click, time, time stretch. So what I imagine for this is I want the shockwave to go really fast. It's more like explosion instead of like a gradual uh, growth. So let's change this from 100 to 10 percent. So now it goes way way faster than before and that actually makes the energy more violent. Then I want to scale it down a little bit. Okay so next we are going to fix the tracking issues which honestly isn't really feasible now because the elements are going really fast but I'm still going to fix it. So we want our elements to be tracked and suspended on midair, but the problem is there is no object or point that we can track on that position and depth. The buildings are too far back so we cannot track that, and the gun has its own motion relative to the scene so we cannot track that either. So how to get around this? Well, what we can do is to do a 3D camera tracking. So then we will have a complete 3D recreation of our camera movement, and then in 3D space that we just created, we will add a 3D null that we will later convert into 2D null that we can use as our tracker. So let's do that. Let's go to our plate here. Let's solo it so we can see what's going on. And then we're going to get camera tracking effects, 3D camera track. So now we just wait until the camera tracking finish. And here we have our camera is finished. We have all the points that is tracked into the shot. So now what I want to do is I want to click a point. I want to click it here because this is more or less has the same depth as our actress. So I want to right click here on our point and create null and camera. Let's scale it up. So now we have this 3D null hanging in space. And then let's rename it to 3D null. There we go. And then we want to move it to where we want the energy to stick to, which is around this area. So now if we play here, we see our null is tracking into that area, which is what we want. So now we want to, of course, parent our elements into this null. But the problem is our elements are 2D layers and we cannot parent 2D layers into 3D null. So what we want is we want to convert this 3D null into 2D. To do that, we want to create a new null, so layer new null, and let's name this 2D null. Let's color this, say, pink. Press P, and we're going to go to position and Alt-click. And then you want to copy paste this expression into the box. You can get this expression on the description below. Don't forget to replace the 3D null part with the name of your 3D null that you have in the composition, which for my case, the name is just 3D null. 
So what this expression does is it translates the 3D position of the 3D null into 2D values for our 2D null. So next what I will do is to take the expression that we just made and convert it into keyframe. Because currently our 2D null gets its values directly from another layer which is the 3D null. So if anything happens to the 3D null, the 2D null will be affected. And I don't want that. I want the 2D null to stand on its own. So I want to convert the expression into its own keyframe baked into the 2D null. So let's select our position here and we're going to go to animation, keyframe assistant and converts expression to keyframes. So now we have our null still tracked into the scene, but instead of getting the information from the 3D null, it has its own keyframe information. So now it stands by its own. So now let's disable the solo so we can have our energy elements back. And let's delete the 3D null and the 3D camera because we don't need it anymore. And then select all of our elements here and click the parent whip and parent them into the 2D null. So now the energy is tracked into the scene. So now we want to start doing the beauty work on our energy blast. So we want to add the glow and then maybe adjust the color a little bit. So here I want to make the energy blast here to be a bit similar to the color of the other energy. So we're going to go to the energy blaster and we're going to go to hue and saturation. There we go. And then we're going to go to the master hue and just rotate it to the right a little bit. So now it kind of mimics the color of the other energy blast. And of course, if you want to change the color entirely, like change this blue to red, you can just drag the master hue until you find the color that you want. So for example, this purple red here. But I like this blue, so I'm just going to keep it that way. So now we have our color. The next thing we're going to do is we want to give everything a glow. So what I want to do is I actually want to pre-comp everything except the plate. So we're going to select the energy shockwave, burst, toward. Actually, I'm also going to leave the lens flare icon behind. And then I'm going to select the 2D null. And we are going to pre-comp it, Control shift c And name this energy pre-comp. There we go. And of course, we are losing the blending mode. So let's change this again to screen. There we go. So now we have the energy pre-comp. And we have our lens flare and our plate. So now that everything is separated, uh, let's move the lens flare to the top. Now I want to add some glow. Of course, you can use the After Effects native glow effects. But I'm actually going to use Red Giant optical glow plugin so let's go optical glow there we go drag it into our energy pre-comp so i'm using optical glow because it gives me this vibrant color look very quickly and we have this really cool settings that we can play around with for example i want the glow to be a bit more spread out so let's get the size up here and maybe reduce the amount a little bit because we don't want it to be a bit over bright and then we can play around with the highlight roll off there so the highlight isn't too harsh and then i want to play with the vibrance so if we increase the vibrance it becomes more saturated and then we can change the color of the glow for example we can change here with colorize if we click we can change the color of the glow independently okay so now just a little bit um, adjustment I'm going to actually add hue and saturation there we go we are going to reduce the saturation a little bit there we go okay so it's looking pretty good and then we are going to add a bit of Gaussian blur because so far it's really sharp and then let's make this like three so the next thing we're going to do is we want to add some glow catching our actress so let's get layer new adjustment layer put it below everything but above the plate rename this to glow 
then we want to get curve and we want to make it bright on our rgb and then we want to reduce the red and the green a little bit and then go to the blue and increase the blue and then we're going to go to the pen tool and start masking our glow mask okay then let's press f and we are going to make the edges smooth so let's go with something like 55 so now we want our glow to fade in and fade out according to the energy so let's press t to bring up opacity at the keyframe and then move a couple of frame forwards maybe around here it's already disappeared then move backwards in frame and let's trim again so i'll open bracket so now the glow only appears when the energy appears okay and then let's press m and we are going to go to the mask path add keyframe and we want to start animate it so it follows our actress okay so here i actually want to make the feather a bit more smoother than this so let's go to the globe again press f and let's just increase the featherness there we go so now the edge is a bit smooth than before all right now one last thing before we wrap up i'm going to add displacement map on our energy just to make it a bit more sci-fi so let's add a new adjustment layer let's name this displacement okay and then drag it down here and then let's get displacement map there we go then we're going to select the displacement source layer into our energy pre-comp and then let's increase it really big so we see what's going on there we go so if we go forward here you see a bit of that um displacement and of course we have this weird dark edges that's because the displacement is pulling the edge of our shot so let's change the edge behavior to wrap pixels there we go so now it's fixed actually this is a bit too much so let's reduce this to like 20 and 20 there we go and that's our effects once again if you want to purchase the vfx assets that i used in this video you can check out our website at actionvfx.com at action vfx we provide high quality vfx assets for your vfx needs we have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time. Bye-bye.